good morning good evening good afternoon whichever part of the world you are joining the bit from welcome to the satvik toast master of the healthy living i keep saying this every time the name stands for the timing when i say 7 am everybody freaks out but that is why the name is satvik toast master of healthy living it's not just public speaking communication it's also about healthy living and that we will know when you go through the each and every meeting of ours but today we have a packed agenda and only ground rule today is not to disturb everyone and be mindful about your timing with that note let me invite this dynamic host master presiding officer for today distinguished host master prabhat thank you rakhu good morning good afternoon and good evening to host masters and guests so we welcome to another meeting of asati toast masters club for healthy living so we have a vision in toast masters that we provide a supportive and learning environment in which members are empowered to develop their leadership and communication skills resulting in greater self confidence and personal development so that is the objective and club vision of every toast masters club with that let me welcome you once again to an exciting meeting of satik toast masters club as you know the theme for today is leadership in toast masters especially club leaderships in toast masters currently one fine day the last week when we were discussing about the agenda and all i realized that the club the bp club is growing to be a six months old club and it is time to change or hand over the baton to the next set of leaders then uh, the, the core committee of the toast masters Uh, the club we started preparing for the next elections an election commissioner was appointed or election officer was appointed and started expressing opinion from members it is customary that before the elections we should give all the members some clarity about the various roles that they are going to take so the distinguished host master ragu suggested that we'll have a session on club leadership roles and when it comes to the last minute preparation uh, i have one person in the whole world without even asking i can say that okay this person will do it and that is distinguished host master lakshmi so uh, and most of the time she realizes her roles at the last minute when i tell her that i committed something on behalf of her then she has uh, that scary scary look on my face <laughs> and and she said okay fine fine so today morning when i woke up at 4:30 i was seeing that she was sitting there and searching in internet And making PPT for my children-in-law. And yesterday, in fact, we had a party in my house. We slept at around twelve thirty, one o'clock, and in three thirty, she woke up and she was started making preparations. So that is the spirit of Toastmaster. Why did I tell you all these personal details? Why? Because we both take Toastmasters very seriously, because we know that we have learned so many things from Toastmasters. Now it's coming to leadership. I am sure that many of you have joined Toastmasters. with an intention to improve your communication skills am i right or not yes when we hear toastmasters the first thing is communication we tell people that to go there give speeches no judgment good evaluation even if you deliver the worst speech in your life people will say that wow that's a great speech then they'll come out it see most of the daughter in laws they improve their feedback because they learned from toastmasters they started giving sugar coated feedback to their mother in laws it improves lives it improves family relationship at the same time it improves your leadership skill also that's why uh, let me quote a famous uh, lines the, the art of communication is the language of leadership so we are here to learn the language of leadership the communication is only a language part that is you are here actually for learning leadership so that's why after a year after two years people they suddenly jump into the leadership roles and they start pick up in some of the vital habits necessary for leaders for example small small things that we learned from here for example timing they we started at 7 o'clock and if you go to any any toastmasters club the timing never changes if it is 7 they'll start dot at 7 o'clock if you want to end it it will end and 10 minutes before everybody joins so that is something called self discipline which is required for every leader that's a vital leadership skills you look like look at any people any person in your office in your boss everybody 
so they all will say that without spending even a single rupee if you can develop the leadership skills that is punctuality so that is one thing we learned from you so such so many things are there so today we are here to celebrate all those things and understand more about this thing more about the club leadership roles and i will give you my personal experience as a leader in toastmasters i am a distinguished toastmaster i we i've got 7 years experience in toastmasters i was pushed to the leadership level by some of my mentors uh, uh, one one fine day they said you are going to be the president of the club i said me yes you are going to be president of the club so and that to a club maybe the largest and the oldest club in pune so they made me president and it was a responsibility i really enjoyed the different different roles i have taken that i will take you through all the different roles and how you are going to get benefit out of this because at the end of the day everybody asks a question what is there in it for me so that's a question people ask so how do i benefit from this thing i am spending a lot of time for this effect so how do i am going to spend all those things okay so that's the that's roughly the theme of today's meeting right uh, prinda this is what we want to do it today right good and uh, uh, before the meeting i can see some of the guests over here guest uh, uh, rajiv vishnu vardhan navin parwal oasis keshri vamshi vamshi is not a guest anybody who uh, wants to introduce themselves by unmuting your video and audio please make a quick introduction in 30 seconds about how did you come to know about this club and what's your what's your way forward would you like to join in toastmasters or just here to see and watch what is going to happen here yeah hi uh, i'm navin parwal and uh, i'm joining in, joining in from jaipur india okay. and uh, i came to know about this club from from uh, the whatsapp group and uh, whenever le- whenever it's possible i try to to join in uh, to to get to learn more ab- about uh, the famous speeches or the good speeches or healthy speeches i would say which are delivered out here and uh, well i've been for, i've been a toastmaster for more than de- a decade now in in different districts yeah okay. and it's always a pleasure to 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 attend toastmasters meeting whether in town or online or whatever manner and serve different roles thank you thank you navin thank you so much it's good to have you here a decade of experience definitely will contribute to the growth of this club ayasis keshri hope i am pronouncing correctly yes yeah please yeah uh, hi everyone a uh, good morning everyone this is ojit keshri currently i am pursuing my chartered accountancy course and one of my mentor uh, advise me to join this toastmaster club to to enhance your effective communication skill uh, and soon i am looking for physical meetups and all and this will be the great great thing for me thanks pramod for this. my dear friend you are at the right place don't worry yeah. you are in safe hands do join every week yes great. yes yeah. and uh, any other guest i think vibhuda is attending for the first time he's not a guest he's a toastmaster but still i think i am seeing him for the first time if you could vibhuda yeah so i joined the last meeting one of the last meeting as the account right so yeah he was the account yeah okay okay yeah so basically i am been toastmaster for two and a half years so just two and a half years uh, so uh, i got to know about this club from heshan i think heshan hetiyashi he gave me this opportunity to last time opportunity to do a role as an account so then i thought of you know pursuing uh, doing that because i need to get to know uh, more people in toastmasters fraternity and uh, and i'm uh, if i if i get into my studies i'm doing tourism and uh, i'm at my final year yeah that's pretty much great great so last week i think we celebrated diversity in that diversity celebration i might have forgotten the names extremely sorry the diversity is something very confusing <laughs> okay uh for the benefit of the guest uh, let me just read out uh, the program structure for today we'll have four sessions first is a keynote session by distinguished host master lakshmi nair about the roles and responsibilities of of a club in a toastmaster of a of a, the executive committee in a toastmasters club 
second would be prepared speeches. We have two speeches well prepared by two uh, speakers. And the third session is table topic session. And the fourth would be the evaluation session. So total there would be four different sessions. And in between there is help master tips. And uh, I, I would call people at the appropriate time for delivering their roles. For that, let me... I'm not doing to, uh, I'm going to do this alone. I have a team of people to help me, support me to conduct this program. For the smooth conduct of this program, we need people. Uh, we have three different roles. We call it as PAG, P -A -G, that is timer, accounter, and grammarian. To the role of the timer, we have uh, Toastmaster RF. RF, are you there? Yes, I'm enjoying. So probably you can go to other roles. Meanwhile, yeah, timer is not on time, so we are going ahead with the other roles. Grammarian, the last minute grammarian, Toastmaster Vibhuda. Vibhuda, could you so, just uh, explain your role and introduce the word of the day for today's meeting? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So as a grammarian, it is uh, my responsibility to pay close attention. To all speakers, listening carefully to their language usage, I'll take no note of any improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. As a grammarian, it is my duty to introduce the word of the day, which is serene, which it is an adjective, which means calm and peaceful. So if I were to put that in a sentence, her eyes were closed and she looked very serene. And uh, may and also we'll give a small virtual round of applause if they use the word of the day, and uh, yeah, and I also encourage all our Toastmasters to use the word of the day. And back to you. Thank you, thank you. And if you really want to know what is serene, look at now we are screen. The background will remind you what does the word serene means. The universe is so serene if you sit in silence and watch in silence. Like many, many, many people, they have got enlightenment by just simply looking at uh, the serene atmosphere. So my wife had gifted me a book. Last December 2nd was my birthday and she had gifted me a book written by Ocho. And the title of the book was Awareness. So after 18 years of marriage, she was telling me that you have not created an awareness about yourself as a husband, as a father or as a friend or whatever it is. So she strongly advised me to read that book. The first chapter in the book is about the serene atmosphere and it's about mindfulness. Okay. Here also we practice mindfulness because we feel, we see, we we touch and uh, every aspect of it we understand from here. I'm just waiting for the timer to join. Let's move ahead. If the timer, uh, he is having some technical issue. So he's joining. So, uh, so that's the uh, tag rule. I need that after 18 years in marriage. Rago was sending me a message. <laughs> so just like a leadership roles getting transformed every five years, so marriage is also getting transformed every first year. So it's almost like a transformation change after 18 years. I am just wondering whom I married. So uh, it is not the person I married 18 years. I'm sure that you all feel the same thing. So this kind of transformation will happen here in Toastmasters also. I'll just ask you whether what was your situation when you joined Toastmasters, whether you were reluctant to give a speech, whether you were hesitant to communicate, whether you were very shy in interacting with the opposite sex. So many people, they have come here with different, different uh, purpose. Some people, they join Toastmasters for communication, some join for speaking to uh, people, some join to understand, to get rid of the stage fear and many, many things are there. So let me ask the leadership journey of some of the senior Toastmasters here. I'll just ask distinguished Toastmaster Rekhu, what was your experience in the first day or the first month or how do you see that your leadership journey, uh, your Toastmasters helped in your leadership journey or development, please? Thank you very much, Shri Shoshma Pramod. Well, from the leadership journey in Toastmasters, one thing that was uh, that is is the fact that it is fail safe in common. Right? It doesn't matter whether you're failing or passing. So that gives you confidence. 
to grow as a leader, whether it is the at club level or district level. So that helped me to manage the work with my team better and manage everything well, whether it is the events that we are planning or the way that I structure my work, how do I plan it well? For example, the same way that I opened Toastmaster meeting at least 15 to 30 minutes ahead, I opened my Scrum meeting too. I keep sending the same message. It's kind of tone that you set in, right? And also the way that I talk, yeah, that I way I structure even the talk at my workplace, the same way that I do my speeches has helped me a lot. It's helped me to go places in my workplace that I would say. So even as a father, even as a husband, so I don't get into conflict that easily because of the conversation and also the way my leadership skills have evolved over a period of time in Toastmasters. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Ravi, uh, Raku. Uh, we do have a new Toastmaster. He is here to learn uh, leadership through various roles. Uh, with a huge round of applause, let me invite uh, Toastmaster Sudhir Sana to explain his role for today's meeting. Sudhir. Hi, uh, good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, I'll be acting as your uh, R counter to note down uh, any filler words or any uh, over long pauses. Or any, and I'll be uh, I'll be giving a detailed report at that during the evaluation of the meeting. Back to you, Toastmaster. Yes, yes, yes. So our counter is a role which will catch your R's, ums, crutch words, long words, long courses, small courses, jumbling, fumbling, all those things. And he will come out with his role, his report at the end of the meeting when called for such a report. Thank you, Sudhir. Be vigilant and attentive. Sudhir is here, so he will catch all your R's and ums. Okay. And uh, now we have our timer, timer RF. Could you please enlighten us with your roles? Yep. Uh, very good morning to one and all. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, my role for today is timer. What timer exactly do does is I'll keep a track of all your timings, your speech timings, uh, table topics, and evaluations. The time for speech six minutes uh for evaluations it's two to three minutes and for table topics it's one to two minutes for speech i'll show a green card at five minutes yellow card at seven minutes and a red card at oh, sorry yellow card at six minutes and red card at seven minutes uh for table topics i'll show a green card at one minute yellow card one minute 30 seconds red card at two minutes uh, for evaluations green card at two minutes yellow card at two minutes 30 seconds and red card at three minutes a grace period of 30 seconds will be given in all the cases and i'll be giving my report at the end of the meeting when called upon okay. by the could you check the cards right now Arif? uh one second Show us the cards. This will be red. Red. Yes. This will be yellow. The full. And this will be the green card. Serene. Good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Raku categorically said in the very beginning of the meeting that we are going to have a very packed agenda today. So time should be kept. Uh, uh, prompt. I think that was a warning for me because he knows that I always take a lot of time. <laughs> I take it personally. <laughs> okay. With uh, this, let me first let me start our first session. So we are here. I, I told you that next week we are going to have club elections. So let's know a little bit about the club leadership roles and how... help master. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. The 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 purpose of the club is to give provide healthy tips to our members. We have a health master in every meeting uh, to give today's health tips and uh, enlighten the audience with the need of creating a good health. I would request distinguished Toastmaster Raghunath Raju Sarikunda to deliver the session on health tips. Thank you very much, distinguished Toastmaster Pramod. We'll go to go back to basics in today's health tip. Drink your water properly. Do you drink 
and chew your water. Well, you must chew your water. Exactly. You must chew your water because it has to be alkaline. Our stomach is usually acidic. And to make it better, if you chew your water, if you sip it slowly, it mixes with your saliva, goes in your body and makes it alkaline. And, and that's how it helps your body. And how do you drink your water? Is something that you must understand because 60% of our body is made of water just like that. So you need water. You need water for everything, including the way that how your blood flows. You remember in your childhood, when your parents used to, our grandparents would tell you, do not drink water in between the meals. Yes, you should not drink because when you're, it's time to eat, your stomach starts producing acids so that it can digest the food. But if you gulp the water in between, what it does is, decreases the acidic value in the stomach and that how that's how you can the food goes undigested and also the more water you drink it just flushes out of the kidneys without absorbing into the entire body the water you drink is necessary for it to be absorbed in every part that only happens when you drink it slowly and not between the meals so be careful about how you drink your water. And also, the normal consumption that is advised is two to three liters per day. Rather, I would say, if you are a female, it is six to eight glasses of water. If you're pregnant, that's again about eight to 12 glasses. And then if you're an athlete, that will be about 12 to 16 glasses per day. This only advice, at the same time, what you must ensure is not to drink a lot of water. Do you remember sometimes you get irritated, you feel lost, and you feel exhausted by the end of the day? That's because you drink a lot of water, maybe due to the sun, due to the heat. And then what it does is it flushes out the necessary nutrients, the salts from your body, and that confuses your mind. The so next time, Keep a watch on that and ensure that you drink optimum amount of water, not more, not less. Drink enough water per day and drink it right, not between the meals. The apt way of saying is 30 minutes before the meal, 30 minutes after the meal. This is the gap that you should maintain and do not drink water in between them. If you can maintain that, I'm sure it will help you a lot. It's okay how much you want to drink after 30 minutes of your meal, but not between the meals and not between the, the, the tiredness. I wish you all the best and hope you will follow this trip and maintain sattvic health. Toshmaster. Uh, thank you, Raku. I saw three people drinking water, including myself, Via and Lisa. Three people, they, they just drank right now because the most important thing for drinking water is reminders so you can put a reminder in your phone so that you will be able to drink seven glass or eight glass of water thanks for that beautiful tip i'm sure that water is very important in life with this let's move on to the first major session of today's meeting that's the keynote speech where distinguished toast master lakshmi nair on club leadership roles with a huge round of applause let me welcome the always supporting always you know uh, yeah supporting <laughs> distinct toastmaster lakshmi yes. over to you lakshmi i was about to say always smiling but she's not always smiling <laughs> thank you this detail pramod I was just taken aback by that introduction, so I was taking a little bit of time to process it. Thank you so much. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, members, Toastmasters. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today about uh, the club officer roles, which I think uh, for a club like ours, which 
is uh, comparatively new with a lot of new members uh, is much required at this point of time where we are moving towards the next elections. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to having an insightful session with you all. Uh, like DTM Pramod mentioned in the beginning, uh, this was a PPT that I prepa prepared in short notice. So the PPT doesn't have so much of um, so much of information, but I will be speaking to you and probably during the Q&A, you can also ask your queries, uh, which I would try to address. Uh, so let me share my screen now. Uh, can, can, uh, can, can I please be enabled to share my screen because I think it is disabled. Yes. Yeah, Try now, Lakshmi. Yeah. Is this screen visible? Yes. All right. So club officer's role in Toastmasters. So club is the bottom of the pyramid in this great organization that is Toastmasters International. Uh, it is... It is at the pyramid, at the bottom of the pyramid, above which there is the area, and then there is the division, then there is a district, and then there is a region, and then it is Toastmasters International. So a club ideally will have, uh, ideally should have 20 plus members. The club can function even if uh, there are eight paid members, but ideally a healthy club would have somewhere between 20 or 20 plus members. And three to four, three to five clubs, three to six clubs together form an area. And three to six areas or two to five areas together form the division. And a couple of divisions together form the district. And then we have the region and then we have the board of directors at those masters international. So that is the leadership hierarchy that we have. And club forms the base. So we are all part of District 126. We are a club in District 126 and a district usually in a district the club forms the foundation. And can anybody tell me what is the foundation for the club? What do you think is the foundation of the club? Just like how a uh, club is the foundation for the rest of the build-up of the pyramid. What is the foundation of the club? You can unmute and tell me. Members. Yes. So the foundation of the club is members. The club officers are a group of people who come from these members, who are working for these members and who work with the support of these members. So we are, the club officers are just a group of people, a group of eight people who come together to help provide the members with a quality meeting experience. So what makes the club executive committee or what are the major leadership roles that one can take up in a club. The first one is the club president. Next comes the vice president education. Then there is a vice president membership. Then there is vice president public relations. Then there is club secretary, club treasurer and sergeant at arms. Apart from all these seven people, there is another important role that is there in the executive committee, which is of the immediate past president. So past president, the immediate past president also becomes part of the club executive committee. So these seven are the major leadership roles who work together uh, to, uh, to set up the meeting, to ensure the members are progressing in their educational paths, to ensure that the club administration is done in a proper way. So all these uh, seven people work together with the support and guidance of the immediate past president. 
Now I will take you through the responsibilities, the major responsibilities of all these roles, starting with the club president. So the club president, you can say, is the CEO of the club, the, the person who is who's in charge of leading and guiding the entire team and the members. So you can consider him as a managing director, coach, whoever is there to support the club with their guidance and leadership. The main, main uh, responsibility of the president is to preside over meetings. It is not just the club meetings, but also there is the club executive committee meetings that happen at regular intervals where he brings together his team of seven people, eight people, and they decide on further course of actions. They decide where the club is lacking and uh, what has to be done to improve the meeting experience. So that happens in the club executive committee. A lot of planning regarding uh, the progress towards uh, the distinguished club uh, uh, programs. So all that happens in the executive meeting. So the president not only presides over the club meetings regularly, as we saw in the beginning of the meeting today, uh, President DTM Pramod opened the meeting. He, he explained the roles, supporting roles that he has today, uh, his team. He greeted the guest. He gave his opening remarks and he's presiding over this meeting. So similarly, the president has a responsibility to preside over the club meeting, the executive committee meetings. And then he also plays a major role in guiding the club on the distinguished club recognition. So the distinguished club program is a year-long program uh, that is given by Toastmasters International. It runs from July to June, the Toastmaster year. And uh, there are certain points that the club receives when they achieve certain milestones. So the major ones, there are 10 goals that the club works towards to achieve the distinguished club uh, uh, recognitions. They, these goals majorly are uh, based on the educational achievements of the members. And then there is uh, there are points that the club receives to build membership. Uh, and then uh, all these selected officers, they are supposed to attend the club officers training programs at the beginning of their tenure. Uh, all this has points for the club. So when all the uh, leaders at, attain, uh, attend the training program, the club receives a uh, club has achieved one of the goals in the distinguished club program. And uh, then for submitting the member, for renewing all the membership and submitting the dues on time, um, presenting the documents on time. So all of these, all of these together, the uh, members progress in terms of their educational goals, the administration, the membership building, all of these are part of Distinguished Club program, uh, part of the goals that the Distinguished Club program has and DCP points depend for the club depends on all of this. And the president is the major person who ensures that the members and his team are working. We are all on the same page while working towards reaching this, uh, these goals so that the club gets its due recognition at the end uh, from the Toastmasters International. Once we achieve certain points, the club receives certain awards like Distinguished Club, Select Distinguished Club, President's Distinguished Club, etc. So these, these depends on the number of goals that the club has achieved. Next one is the president is also a representative of the club in the area and the district. So there is just like how we have a team in the club there, the area has a team. It is called the area council, which comprises of the area director and his team. And then there is uh, the uh, division and the district where they have team. So the president is representing his club. He is a representative of his club in the area and the district and even the international levels. Then we have some, the president has another responsibility, which is a base camp manager. So the base camp, base camp is, uh, we have a certain page in Toastmasters International website, which is called base camp, which uh, is an aid to help members uh, progress in their educational learning experience. So a base camp manager is actually a role that facilitates the members to progress in their uh, pathway uh, learning. Uh, so what they basically do is once a member has finished a particular uh, uh, milestone in their pathway learning, 
the base camp manager would they would put up a request for granting of the certificate for that particular level and the base camp manager is has a responsibility of approving this request and also tracking the progress of the members so if there are members who have not submitted they might they might reach out to the members and ask why what is the glitch that they are facing so they approve and track members progress with regard to their educational programs with regard to their pathway uh, progress so usually in our club it is a club president the vice president education and the club secretary who are the base camp managers so any of these members can do the role of a base camp manager and approve request and track the progress of their members so during the so these are the major roles that a president plays in terms of his leadership role coming back to vice president education so i told you the president is the ceo manager man, man, say, managing director and everything in the club but i have often found that it is the vice president education who actually carries the responsibility of ensuring that quality in meetings there's a lot of work that goes behind in this uh, while being uh, the vice president education because they are the ones who ensure that all the meeting goals are filled at the right time with the right people like for example if it is a new toastmaster they cannot be give assigned the role of a tmod in the beginning so they need to be guided properly they need to be assigned mentors so all of these responsibilities are done by vice president education so we can say that the vice president education is the one who coordinates the club schedule Uh, so they ensure that all meeting rules are so ideally they begin preparation if it is a meeting that is happening today they begin preparation weeks before that because they need to reach out to members they need to uh, coordinate with these members so if it is a tmod uh, they have to ensure that the tmod knows what the role is if it is a supporting role of a timer or a grammarian or a uh, our counter they need to know the members should be very well versed with the responsibility that that particular role has and it is up to the vice president education to ensure that the member understands their roles so uh, i personally began my journey with toastmasters club of pune and uh, what attracted me most in that club was the uh, extremely well coordinated way the uh, vice president education membership went about so all uh, went about preparing for the meeting so all the role players will be given uh, documents about their role and timelines where they need to prepare certain task for their uh, role in the upcoming meeting on saturday so throughout from monday to saturday they are preparing for their roles based on these timelines which i i felt was very well organized so it's up to the vice president education to plan how they have to coordinate with the members and bring about a quality meeting but these are the roles these are the main roles that they ensure meeting roles are properly filled and they publish the send email intimations they prepare the agenda and ensure that the meeting happens in a very well coordinated way secondly they support educational programs of the members like i said they guide the members uh, in their pathways journey they track the progress they reach out to members to ensure that they are not facing any hurdles in their pathways journey and as i said in the beginning uh, in our club apart from the president and secretary it is a vice president education who has the access to base camp so they also play the role of a base camp manager they also plan speech contest so we, our club had the first speech contest very recently so similarly we have other speech contest also the international speech contest the table topics speech contest the evaluation contest humorous contest so all of these speech contest planning happens at the vice president education level and then they also manage mentor program so ideally a club should have proper uh, mentor program because that is very important for the proper 
uh, growth and guidance that is required for new members. So it is up to the vice president education to reach out to new members, introduce them to the available mentors, seek their uh, opinion on whom they would like to work with and also get back to the mentor, tell them that these, these people are assigned as your mentees and ensure that there is proper communication between the mentor and mentees and the program is happening regularly. So that is also the responsibility of vice president education. Coming to vice president membership. This, I would say vice president membership is a phase of the club because they are the ones who reach out to their guest, who go outside and speak about the club to the audience out there. So they are, their major responsibility is to recruit new members. Uh, as I said, a club ideally should have 20 plus members. So it is up to the vice president membership to uh, keep uh, keep the efforts on to attract new members. So they may plan various membership building programs for that. There, uh, uh, there are times when they would plan membership building programs even outside the club. There are, there are times when ours is an online club, but when it comes to offline clubs and hybrid clubs, there are membership building programs that are planned in different um, societies, corporate offices, and even educational institutions so that you know you attract more members so that you create visibility about this platform to the outside world and this the major responsibility regarding this lies with the vice president membership so and also uh, the club receives certain awards for adding new members there are there are different there are three different awards that a club receives for adding new members which is a smedley award the talk up uh, toastmasters and beat the club so these are awards that are given to the club at specific periods during the year for building, adding new members. So the vice president membership is also in charge of ensuring that the club works towards attaining these awards. So during the meeting, the vice president membership usually remains there at the door to greet the new members, the guests who are coming in. They would provide the guest with guest packages, which has a basic, uh, which gives them a basic idea of what Toastmasters International is, um, how the club is functioning, what are the meeting times, what are the benefits of joining the platform. And then after the meeting, uh, ideally the vice president membership would call the new members for a quick uh, chat on how they can. Um, uh, they can join the club. What are what is the membership process and what are the fee dues that they need they need to pay to join the club? So they assist the guest uh, in their joining process. And after that, once the club uh, once a new member joins, they submit their membership and the membership fee membership application and the membership fee. The vice president membership processes the membership application. They add the new member into the website and they coordinate with the pressurer for onward payment of the membership dues. Next comes the vice president public relation, which is another very important role, as important as uh, vice president membership in attracting new members. And this is a role where which uh, it's a team, we all work together, but I have often found that the vice president membership, when the vice president membership and vice president public relations work together, it creates a huge impact in uh, creating more visibility for the club. So the major role of vice president public relationship is to, is to market the club. So they publicize the club. They go about outside uh, telling people about the club. They create visibility online for the club. So they are in charge of maintaining the social media pages of the club in different platforms, be it Facebook, be it LinkedIn, be it Instagram, Twitter, all those platforms, uh, they keep uh, publishing uh, details about the meetings, the meeting posters, the major events that are happening in the club. They ensure that uh, even outside uh, offline, they ensure that uh, the uh, visibility is created for a club in different places. Uh, and then they keep the club website current. So every club ideally will have a club website and the vice president public relation is in charge of uh, ensuring that it is updated uh, at regular intervals and uh, is current in all the information that is provided 
and then uh, another major role. So the vice president public relation is usually the person who makes the posters and who makes the uh, material that is circulated to the audience uh, uh, to create visibility for the club. So one, a major part of the role is to safeguard the Toastmasters brand, the trademarks and copyrights. So the, and this is one point which is given a lot of importance during the club officers training that happens after the officers are recruited because in no way you are allowed to tamper with the brand trademarks and copyrights of Toastmasters International. So whenever you are using uh, the, uh, the Toastmasters International pro materials, proper, uh, it should be in compliance with the existing rules. And uh, otherwise, if there is a deviation, permission has to be taken from Toastmasters International to do that. And this is a responsibility of Vice President Public Relations to ensure that. And now the treasurer. The, the treasurer is the accountant. He is the chief accountant of the club. He or she is the chief accountant of the club. So he prepares at the beginning of his term, he prepares a club budget and he oversees that the club is functioning as per the bu budget that is prepared. And uh, then he reports the club budget. So uh, whenever a club executive committee is happening, he uh, reports the uh, expenses and the uh, income that has come. Ideally, we don't look at the income. It is a non-profit, uh, not-for-profit organization. But we look at the uh, expenses and the the outgoings and the incomings with regard to club finances, and that is duly reported to the club members also, as well as the executive committee meeting. Then another major responsibility of the treasurer is to manage the club bank account. So if it is a new club, uh, the, it is the treasurer who reaches out to the bank along with the required documents to uh, open the club bank account. And he is the one who has access to the bank account along with the president. So they, it is usually operated as a joint account, but the treasurer has the main responsibility to manage the bank account. And and next one is whenever a new, a new member joins, it is a responsibility of the treasurer to uh, pay the membership dues and also ensure that the membership renewals happens on time. Membership renewal is also another major responsibility of vice president membership. So the vice president membership reaches out every year, half yearly, we renew our membership. So it is a vice president membership who reaches out to members uh, and both these people, the treasurer and the vice president membership work together during the renewals to collect, to ensure that the members are renewing and to collect the membership dues and pay it onward to Toastmasters International. And uh, finally, they pay the bills. So they are the ones who sign the checks, pay the bills uh, for the different expenses that happen in Toastmasters uh, in the club. And then we come to the role of the secretary. The secretary you is the one who uh, maintains the documents. So they take notes. During the meeting, you can see that the secretary would be taking notes. They are taking down the minutes of the meeting, which they circulate later after the meeting to the members and the executive committee. Not just about the meetings, they also take notes, uh, take the minutes of the meeting during the club executive committee, which is later documented and shared with the rest of the committee. And then they maintain the club files, not just the minutes of the meetings, but all the club documents, including the resolutions, whatever correspondence that the club makes uh, with the district or with the uh, Toastmasters International Headquarters. So there are certain requirements, certain documents have to be kept for specific length of time and the club secretary is in uh, charge of that. And the club secretary also reports new incoming officers to the Toastmasters International. If, it, if there is a change, if there is a uh, if there is a new officer coming in, it is the secretary who reports it. And he is also the base camp manager. And the last role is that of Sergeant at Arms who takes care of the club property. This is a major role. So the Sergeant at Arms ensures that the meeting venue, be it online or offline, it is properly managed. Uh, so they, if it is an offline meeting, they come early, they prepare the club, uh, the venue, so that uh, you know everything is arranged in order, the seats are arranged in order, the lectern is placed, the gavel is placed. If it's an online meeting, the sergeant at arms ensures that the uh, uh, connectivity is good, that there are no uh, glitches online. So they are, uh, they are 
have the responsibility of coordinating club meetings so that the meetings go smooth. And the final, the important last but not the least role, which is the immediate past president. So the immediate past president is also a part of the executive committee. Now we will have a new executive committee soon for the club and DTM Pramod will also be part of the executive committee as the uh, past president. So he is a resource for the club. He is the connecting link between what has been done so far and what has to be done and what has to be done ahead. He would be guiding the club there and helping the club charter the club success plan and work towards a distinguished um, club program. So these are the major uh, roles that are there uh, in a club leadership, in a club executive committee. And uh, the club works, the team works together with the support of the members to ensure that all of us receive a uh, a great meeting experience every time. That's all from my side. If you have any questions, I can go for it. Lakshmi, you can stop sharing the screen so that we'll come to the meeting. Yeah, that's nice. Now it's time for any questions. I would encourage all the members to ask any questions. If you have any leadership roles in your mind and you want a clarity, you want some clarity, you can ask questions. She, she would be happy to answer you. Yeah, hi, Lakshmi, Ashish here. So for, if anybody is planning for DTM, right, what kind of roles, leadership roles they should take up? So usually for DTM, you have to uh, complete two paths. And then there are various roles that you take up. At the club level, you have to finish two six months period, a, a year period of you know, leadership role in a club. And then you go ahead and take leadership roles in the district. It can be uh, an area, area director role. You have to mentor. You have to be a mentor for a club. You have to be a uh, sponsor for a club where you play. A uh, sponsor is someone who plays a very important role in chartering a new club. And uh, then you, you act as a mentor for a new club for a specific period of time. So all of these requirements together help you achieve DTM. Okay, just to clarify one year of club officer role, then uh, mentor and sponsor for a particular club and uh, a leadership role also needed on the area level? District level, one year district leadership level. roles is required. Okay. One year district it level. It can be leadership. anything. It can be a area director. It can be a division director. It can be anything. And a major thing is you have to finish two levels of pathways, the educational program. Uh, so you have to first finish one and one more. Small correction. It will be two pathways. Yeah, yeah, two, two. Sorry, she sorry. said two. Two. Yeah. two. Thank you. And then also uh, you can take a club coach and then meet some criteria where you can get an exception for district leadership. Yeah, district officer's credit will be given if you are successfully completing club coach role. And no one mentioned the DTM project. Yeah, there is a project called DTM project that goes without saying. So only after that you become a distinguished host. What is club coach, Pramod? Uh, club coach is normally appointed by the district to support some struggling clubs. If some, if a club is having a membership of eight or ten, and the district wants to revive that club. And they will appoint a person as a coach of the club so that the person will give more insights and he will work with the executive committee of the club and he will he or she will revive the club. Once the club becomes a distinguished club, he will get the credit for club coach. And that can be considered for the district officer's credit in filing your DTM project. Am I right, Raghu? I think the rule has not changed. Yeah, right now it is... Only role change, uh, the change is that you must uh, complete your term as a uh, club coach, get the club distinguished, and also if you get the uh, 20 members by the term end, and then the term also changes, you need to serve minimum for six months as a club coach. I think you are all, uh, please Raghu. Earlier, there were so many techniques that people have used, you know, like just like politicians, like they've joined in five minutes, they've had 
five months, five days they have had a team or one month they have done all the magic tricks. But that didn't help the club. So now they want to, to serve for minimum six months as a club coach, get the required membership, get the club distinguished, and also at least get the 20 members. That's a healthy number for the club. That's what they ask. Okay, guys, uh, I think more questions you can connect with Dr. DTM Lakshmi Nair. Uh, she will share her email. So we have shared some communication in the group. If you have any, any interest in taking up any roles, you can send a mail directly to her. Please don't put copy to anybody. Only she uh, would be there in your 2 or CC or BCC. No other copies. So you can directly make her. Lakshmi, please share your email ID in, in the chat box so that people can directly reach out to you with their intention of becoming a club president, VP, education, or whatever role they want to take. It. Anyway, let's move ahead with the second session. Now it's time for prepared speeches. I think Vrinda is just is getting warmed up for the speech. See, she started sharing the screen, checked everything, audio, video, and bright light. So uh, today I th I'm, I'm going, I'm sure that it is going to be a very good speech. Uh, to evaluate, to, to give more information about her projects, we have distinguished Toastmaster Lisa Thompson. Lisa, could you just uh, uh, tell us uh, more about Vrinda's project, levels, title, timing? Yeah, that would be wonderful if I could do that. But the screen that I had opened for some reason has closed. So um, I am ready to evaluate, but I don't have a form in front of me. Wait, I do have a paper form. I, I can do that myself if you like, Lisa. You know what? I do have a paper form someplace. Um, I... Let me see if it's, this is it. So um, the purpose of the product and project is for the member to identify his or her primary leadership style or styles. And the purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspect of her primary leadership style or discuss leadership styles in general. So that's what Verunda is going to do tonight. Does somebody have her introduction? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Toastmaster Vinta is the Vice President of Education of our club. She is an HR professional. And before that, she has got ample experience in banking in India and abroad. Uh, today, she is going to deliver her speech from first her first path, uh, Dynamic Leadership Level 2 Speech. Title of the speech is Cultivating Fearless Workplace. Cultivating Fearless Workplace, Toastmaster Vrinda. Thank you and hello everyone. Today is something which is very unique because I am going to pour out my heart and share my passion. There's one quote that I heard from Peter Drucker. I think I heard it probably 10 years back and that's changed my life. And that's what has attracted me to HR. And that quote is, culture eats strategy for breakfast. It was said by Peter Drucker and it intrigued me. Why would anyone say that? And the reason is, no matter how good your strategy is, no matter how good it looks on, good on paper, but if your people are disengaged, unhappy, there is an atmosphere of fear, then whatever it is, your employees are going to go away from you. you there would be turnover and you are going to recruit, try to create whatever kind of corporate atmosphere, give them whatever giveaways, but they are not going to stay. This is why I got interested. Few years back, there was another interesting story that happened with me. And that was when I heard Amy Edmonds, Edmondson and she talked about a fearless organization and she introduced a concept called psychological safety. She began this concept with a very interesting story. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Here's a picture of the Columbia Space Shuttle uh, crew, 1st February 2003, a tragic loss of lives. You might remember Kalpana Chawla, she was from an Indo-American lady, very popular, and the entire crew could have been amongst us 
till date had it not been for a bunch of people who made a wrong decision the story goes that there was when the space shuttle took off on 1st january 16 january 2003 uh, there was a certain piece of foam that broke off and it hit somewhere around the wing now what happened is the engineers that were monitoring the space shuttle they knew about this they discussed they had a meeting they decided that this is something that they should re report to the mission control that it is something crucial that they feel should be investigated monitored and they could take the necessary remedial steps to take care of this unfortunately when uh, they selected a person his name is rodney rocha rodney was the one who went to mission control and he reported saying that we observe let's observe the wing area impacted by the foam because we suspect that when the spacecraft comes back into orbit there could be a tremendous amount of heat generated and it could cause possible damages now the nasa mission control said stop being chicken little you can see the cartoon behind me uh, the sky is falling the sky is falling is a famous cartoon uh, called chicken little and he was ridiculed saying stop being chicken little now rodney sent a couple of emails again to follow up but after that he gave up because the committee decided that everything is in control this could be something very routine and nothing was done after this only when the spacecraft came back and it split and there was fire and you know after the investigation report came in it was determined that the foam was the primary reason for which this happened now rodney and his team might never be able to sit in peace because they kept quiet then they opted to have a serene environment when probably it would have been important for them to speak up follow up and go ahead with a brave fearless mindset this story actually changed my attitude and i have one of my values in my career has been to stay fearless stay true to your values what you believe the reason i say this is because i have worked in an environment i'm going to show you what happened so this is the foam strike that happened and this is the fearless organization this is a book uh, written by amy edmondson and it has really influenced me the reason i was talking about this book is my own experience and i'm going to talk about both ways the first experience was when i was in a toxic work culture when i was in that work culture i couldn't sustain that for long because there was fear there was constant condescending attitude and because of this uh there was this reprimand that would go on if there were mistakes and there used to be a environment of blame game thankfully i moved off of that environment into a very high performing team environment it was a different atmosphere uh, an atmosphere of trust camaraderie and here's a surprise picture that i wanted to share and that's the reason i didn't stop sharing is this picture it's a very dear picture to me it's my team uh from 2003 we have just recently met uh, two weeks back after 20 years like celebrating our 20th years and that is what i say colleagues once friends forever and why do i remember this team so passionately is just because i i could see this camaraderie this friendship has only nurtured and what happened with this team atmosphere that was a small team our team expanded to about 20 more people and whoever joined our team became friendlier because they came into that atmosphere of building trust learning from each other 
not pinpointing on mistakes, but learning and building on. So that helped us to build our team. And till date, I'm carrying forward this feeling. And that's the reason I want my call to action for all of you is stay fearless, stay true to your values and lead. Even if you're not a leader, your leadership matters. So demonstrate that leadership behavior and believe in what you think is right. Back to you. Thank you, Vrinda. Thank you so much. The stories are really, really you know, emotional stories. I am sure that your concept is well connected. Let's move on to the next speech. Uh, uh, to talk about the next speech, I would invite the evaluator, evaluator for next speech, Amrita Deshmukh. Amrita, could you just tell us about the speaker project? Sure. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. Today, I'm going to evaluate uh, the speech given by Toastmaster Ashish. And please note, Toastmaster Ashish is delivering level two project two from Pathway Innovative Planning. Uh, the purpose of the speech is to connect with audience and timer, please note, timing is five to seven minutes. All the very best Toastmaster Ashish. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Ashish is a system engineer who loves exploring the serene world. And the title of the speech is, let's organize the speech. Let's organize the speech. Toastmaster Ashish. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, uh, TM Pramod. Uh, hearty good morning, good evening to the all my Toastmasters friend and dear guests. I am Ashish. One of the challenges what I face is how to write my speech. I have been a Toastmaster for quite some time and I always have different ideas. But when it comes down to writing a particular speech and delivering it, right, that's where I fail. Is it something which is of importance to you as well? Can you show by raising your hands or virtually raising your hands whether it is important for you to write a speech and go forward in Toastmaster journey? Right, I can see quite a few hands being raised. So let's figure it out together. Why do we need to write a speech? First question. When I tried to ask this question and when I read through Toastmasters material, what they say is whenever you have to present an idea, right? You need to write a speech and then go forward for it. Okay. Then what is a purpose of a speech is the next question which we should ask. So if you ask this particular question, the Toastmasters comp uh, competent communicator module, which is there, they clearly mention that any speech, which is there can be categorized into four different categories. First one is to inform the audience about a particular subject. That is something which I am doing today. I'm informing you about how to organize your speech. Right. Second one is if you want to entertain your audience. So if you want to entertain your audience, in that case, that would be an entertaining speech. You are giving a humorous speech. Right. So that is the second category. The third category is if you want to persuade your audience to align to your values, to your beliefs. That is something what Vinda did today in her first speech. Right. And the fourth one is if you want to inspire the audience for a noble values, which they want to achieve, which we want all of the uh, members or the audience to go for a call of action for a noble purpose. That is an inspiring speech. So these are the four categories. The first one is to uh, inform the audience. Second one is to entertain the audience. The third one is to uh, persuade the audience. And fourth one is to, uh, to uh, yeah. Yeah, it is to, yeah, let me go forward. Sometimes you miss the word which comes into your mind. Anyways, inspire the audience. Yes, I'm back to it. Okay. 
Now, this is the general purpose of your speech. What about your specific purpose? That's the most important part of your speech. So can you write from the point of view of the audience, what is the takeaway in one line which you want the audience to take away from your speech? For example, the specific purpose for my particular speech today is to inform my audience how to effectively organize your speech. That's the one which I want as a takeaway for my audience out here, right? So keep, to keep it short, you should identify what is the purpose of your speech you watched you want to deliver to the audience. First point, what is the general purpose of your speech? Right at the top of while you're writing your speech. The second one should be, what is your specific purpose of your speech? That should be a one-line statement, what you want your audience to do after the speech. So once you have that, right, now we come on how to write the speech. And there, that's where the Toastmasters manual again comes in, the competitor, uh, com uh, communicator, uh, competent communicator, which actually in one of the projects tells that a speech has an opening, a body, and a conclusion. Okay, so opening part, right? In the opening part, that should be something which should be a catchy for your audience. So it should catch the audience attention. Then it should transition to the body of your uh, body of your speech. Now, if you transition to the body of your speech, that should be the transition should be very effective. In the body, you should have like two or three main points. Then for each particular point, you should have sub points or you should have data supporting that main point, okay? And once you explain the idea through your body, you move on to the conclusion part of your speech. In the conclusion, you review all the points which you have detailed in your speech, and you go ahead and do a call of action or what exactly you want your audience to do after hearing this speech and make it a memorable experience for them. So that's the overall organization of your speech. So in review, your speech should have a general purpose. Your speech should have a specific purpose. That should be a one-line statement of what you want to achieve out of that speech, what your audience should be able to do after your speech. Then once you go on writing your speech, what you need to do is have a very good opening where you interact with your audience. Then you transition into the body with few main points and sub points. Then you go forward into the conclusion where you review all the points or the idea which you want to present to the audience and finally conclude with a very good conclusion. With that, I hope I have achieve my specific purpose today to inform my audience on how to effectively organize your speech. With that, over to you, Toastmaster Day, Day TM Pramod. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashish. And uh, request all the audience to give specific feedbacks to both the speakers. You can directly give it to them or put it in the chat box. We are little... We are having a little pack schedule running short of time. So uh, anyway, still it is there in the agenda. We'll go for go with table topics. Uh, Vikas, uh, please make it restricted to two. You can just uh, don't uh, share the screen and all. Make it quick. We can You can call two speakers for the table topics. You can pick up. It's your choice. So let me invite the table topic master for today, Toastmaster Vikas Santhru. Please unmute. Sure. Am I audible? Yes, yes. You're audible and listening. Yes. Okay. Good morning, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and guests. So, uh, shall I directly jump into the topics or uh, shall I brief about table topics? Yeah, let's cut the fluff and get to the uh, point. 
all right okay so i need a volunteer so who wants to take up the topics or can i choose randomly anybody already vishnu is there hey vishnu yeah uh hi vishnu audible yeah uh, you are audible uh, am i visible and audible yes you are yeah and uh, vishnu uh your topic is if you could be the best at any game which would you choose if you could be the best at any game which would you choose timer we are good to start if i could be best at any game uh i would choose table tennis because i can play table tennis inside uh it, it is it can be treated as an indoor game as uh, as well as it can be treated as an outdoor game uh like table tennis involves strategy and also it involves uh it it involves uh, a physical strength so uh it is one uh, it is uh, i can uh, i can unwind uh, myself and uh, uh, when my life uh, becomes chaotic i can uh, i can use table tennis to bring serenity uh, in my life uh, uh over to table topics thank you vishnu in fact it involves lot of fun so playing the tt so that was one of the best moments i could remember in my corporate yeah next is tm bala before you give me the topic table topics master can you please confirm i am audible and visible please yes you are audible and visible thank you is it same for everyone yeah are we good okay so tm bala how do you feel about singing in public how do you feel about singing in public okay. i have had the most wonderful experience in my life singing i would not say wonderful but that was the best experience i had when i was in my 10th standard in my school and that is like i was 14 years of age and specifically at that time for boys the voice changes it becomes a little more hoarse in terms of voice but still i did not give up i went for that music audition or a singing audition for a group song in my school i went there and i wanted to be the leader okay i wanted to be the leader i went and sang first saying that out of 15 people i will sing first for the audition i sang first the teacher told me okay you have sang you go back and sit in your class i went back i sat i thought everyone will come back i waited for like 15 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes after 45 minutes they all came back i just saw and understood that these people had been singing there they were standing there but i did the first song i was not called back after a week i was sitting among <clears throat> i was sitting amongst the audience and realizing that i am a bad singer because the 14 people other than me were standing on the stage and they were singing so they were singing over there and i was sitting there to understand that i am a bad singer 
forget singing about any song in life forget having any great songs that i have sang in life the only thing i got over there was self realization sometimes ladies and gentlemen early self realization is a bliss thank you and back to you table topics master that was a nice realization yeah as we are running short of time so i'm handing over to tm odi so to switch over to the further thank you guys uh thank you vikas thanks for the table topic session without much ado let me invite the general evaluator for today's meeting toastmaster navya to conduct the general evaluation session uh navya are you there navya uh yes pramod uh, uh, yeah yeah yes. thank you toastmaster of the day pramod uh, hi uh, hi fellow toastmasters uh, myself navya i am the general evaluator for today uh, as per uh, to start with uh, uh, the evaluations i'll be uh, first inviting the evaluator for uh, speaker vrinda uh, dtm lisa uh, can we have you here dtm lisa to uh, provide the evaluation for uh, vrinda i'm sorry i've been here i've just been writing um and typing and then writing some more and typing some more so i'm here okay so let me get right to it um okay so verunda is a wonderful speech and i'm going to be reading this because there's so much in it and okay so i observe that you use two stories to illustrate leadership skills of yes of fearful and fearless this um work environments i saw that your speech oh my goodness i am so sorry was well organized with a great opening body and conclusion i love the slides that you used to show these stories of the shuttle and your personal story however the beginning went too quickly and it had no slides for your engaging question or your quote i'd encourage you to to slow down at the beginning and when you when you ask for audience engagement it would be helpful if when you ask a question you have the audience either raise their hand or write something in the chat and when you introduce a quote not just that you write it down but that perhaps you can also show how it relates to the points you're making in your speech and if you enumerate your points similar to how the second speaker whose name i don't remember um showed you how to enumerate those points really clearly and and saying the points that you're really trying to make and differentiating the leadership style of fearless and fearful work environments that would be really good in order to challenge yourself again slowing down using pauses you could perhaps at the end give another story to really show the takeaway I I found that the takeaway was rushed and rather than really showing me how it's going to help me overall that you just kind of rushed through it and I didn't understand what I needed to do in order to create and and be part of a fearless work environment. I think that additionally extra vocal variety and meaning gestures would also help your speech. So that's my evaluation. I hope that helps you overall. Thank you. Thank you, DTM Lesa, uh, for the wonderful evaluation. Now uh, I will call upon the next evaluator, uh, Toastmaster Amruta, to evaluate uh, uh, Toastmaster Ashish's speech. Toastmaster Amruta. 
Thank you, General Evaluator, and once again, good good morning, my fellow Toastmaster and my target speaker, Toastmaster Ashish. Many congratulations to you for delivering your speech successfully within timing guidelines. And your topic was let's organize the speech. The title itself very suitable for the target audience. As a Toastmaster, we are giving speeches on our uh, respective pathways, and the topic was supposed to be very relatable to all of these present in the meeting. So kudos to you on that. Plus I categorize your speech on the informational category. Your speech was full of information about how to organize the speech. Second, I like the non-verbal communication, the body language, because your hand gestures were visible. You maintain the eye contact throughout your speech. You are quite comfortable while delivering the speech and confident also, so I really like that. Plus, you ask the question by in the opening of your speech, so you can connect to the audience. And uh, that was a conflict because I always fail. Uh, you, you said that I always, uh, uh, you know, find difficult to how to or how to write the speech. So everyone can connect there. You serve the speech speech purpose as well. Connect with the audience and full of information about how to organize the speech. So that information is related to us, and you can connect the audience with that. You serve the speech uh, speech objective here. But there are few recommendations for you to improve your speech on the next level. First is that. There is a thin line between speech and educational session. When I heard your speech, I am feeling like uh, the speech was the session was about educational session on how to write the speech, and it's kind of more theoretical. Uh, when you are organize, when you are giving a speech, try to add some stories of your own story, like you felt, uh, like you difficult, face difficulties when you are giving your first icebreaker. So we can connect to that on that point. So try to add a little bit of stories. Uh, and uh, the second was your background. Don't uh, do it on a blur basis. Try to be quite simple because your hand gesture were more visible on the basis of the clear background, the plain background. Also, light lights were not very, uh, you know, clear on your face. So that was the second. And uh, third is voice modulation. Try to uh, give an emphasis on the specific words so we can feel the voice modulation. There was no voice modulation. Sometimes it feels so monotonous. So uh, these are the basic recommendations you can add on your speech to improve your speech on the next level. So overall, excellent speech, very informative. Just work on this basic recommendation and you will go into rocket. All the very best for upcoming speeches. And thank you so much for giving such an information, informational speech to us. Thank you so much. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Amruta, for that uh, great evaluation. Uh, now I will uh, call upon uh, our tag team uh, to present their reports. Uh, so, uh, first, I uh, welcome uh, uh, timer Mr. Arav uh, to present his uh, report. Timer Arav. Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. One second. Uh, let me just open my record. So it's... Two seconds. Okay, starting with the timing reports of the keynote speech, DTM Lakshmi took 23 minutes exactly. Uh, coming to the speeches, Toastmaster Vrinda took 7 minutes 32 seconds, Toastmaster Rashish took 7 minutes 4 seconds. For the table topics, Toastmaster Vishnu took 1 minute 4 seconds, Toastmaster Bala took 2 minutes 15 seconds. As for the evaluations, DTM Lisa took 2 minutes 57 seconds and Toastmaster Amruta took 3 minutes 23 seconds. That's all from my reports. Thank you. Overall, over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Arab. Uh, now I call upon uh, the R counter uh, Toastmaster Sudhir to present his report. 
yeah uh let me give a detailed report on the uh, counter like i don't find any uh, filler words in runda's speech and i could find uh, four filler words in ashish's speech and one pause and for the table topics vishnu you used a uh, more than five times and for the bala's table topic he used a uh, twice back to your general evaluator thank you toastmaster sudhir now i call upon uh, uh, grammarian uh, toastmaster uh, vibuda to uh, present the report uh, thank you so much general evaluator i am a bit of a sad grammarian today because i heard of heard word of the day only eight times if you could have improved it more we could have done uh, better for example at least maximize it by 10 or 15 so then i would be ha been a happy grammarian so when it comes to the good usage of language i found a couple of things so i heard the word unique which means being the only one of its kind and also i heard the quote pour my heart out and also tragic loss of life and uh, the other one also i uh, the other one is turnover uh, it is a uh, first the first it could be interpreted as the amount of money taken by a business in a particular period and also it could be interpreted as the ro the rate at which uh, employees leave a workforce and are replaced right and also the word tremendous means very great in amount scale or intensity and also a work culture something new which means cumulative effect uh, cumulative effect that leadership practices employees behavior workplace amenities and organizational policies create on a worker or internal stakeholder right? that's the main interpretation of that also uh, i heard the quote colleagues once friends forever and also i heard the saying blame game and uh, also the other one that's the good use of usages of language so the other one is uh realizing i had the word realizing according to the scenario it it could have been said as realized this uh, so i think it it is uh, pa the present tense i realize how then in since it's past it could have been i realized that i am uh, so and so so overall uh, that's my report and uh, back to you general evaluator thank you toastmaster uh, vibuda uh a uh, toast master of the, the day pramod uh, can i present my general evaluation now or uh, yes 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 <clears throat> go ahead and complete it please yeah sure thank you uh, uh, coming to my my, my report uh, today uh, we started the meeting uh, uh, at, at dot 7 right and uh, toast master of the day pramod uh, uh, as a uh, welcome the guests well all the guests were welcomed and uh, their introduction we had in place and uh, today there was a new role uh, that uh, we have added as part of our meeting the health master so that was uh, uh, a new initiative i can say which uh, which, uh, which is very helpful as uh, our uh, club theme uh, name itself on satvik uh, lifestyle so definitely we should have something as part of a regular meeting uh, uh, to uh, inculcate healthy habits in uh, in our club members the coming uh, coming to the prepared speeches and uh, uh, our uh, uh, keynote speech uh, the, uh, the speeches were well organized and i can say definitely all the members were very much well prepared that's why we almost reached on the red uh, for all the speeches that shows the uh, high preparedness and the more content which we had and uh, though we started on time uh, we have we are uh, we have were short of time and we could not take uh, too many table topics Uh, so uh, if we can time our speeches uh, to finish in uh, before the red uh, i think we can close the meeting uh, uh, early so that's uh, that's on my report uh, back to you toastmaster of the day pramod thank you navya it was a well hurried report i would say general evaluation i understand that we are 5 minutes beyond our stipulated time for the meeting this meeting was really good wonderful it was about leadership since we had a packed agenda we had to 
go beyond five minutes of our regular time. That is 8.30 IST. Uh, with one last request, I would end this meeting. Uh, the request is to apply actively for the club leadership role for the next tenure. Distinguished Toastmaster Lakshmi Nair had shared her mail ID. I would again, I would share it in the group. Send a mail to Lakshmi. Elections will be conducted next week. We need full quorum. That means all the members should be there so that we can conduct elections if there are more than one candidate. Otherwise, we will just call out the name of the people who expressed their interest in take up, taking up different roles. It is definitely the best thing you can do in your professional life. If you really want to experience leadership at the primary level, and this is the opportunity. With these humble words, let me end the meeting. Uh, Raku, you can officially stop the recording if you are recording.